What's up my Mystical Illuminations family? Star Interstellar here and I would just like you to say thank you for joining me. Once again we are going to get into some of this dragon drama cosmology a little bit today. First and foremost of course as usual I would like to give deep gratitude and thanks to Father Mother God Source within for their presence here and their guidance in ensuring that this transmission is only for the highest and best timeline for anyone who's watching and myself included. So today we are going to part two here, Dragon Cosmology, Dragon Drama Cosmology. We are going to get into a little bit more of what Dragon Cosmology has to do with you uh, or me or anyone on a personal level. Um, kind of bring it down to the micro a little bit because last time if you watch my other videos we got uh, the part one I got into a little bit about how the dragons make up this planet and how their living energy if we can see through the veil uh, makes up a lot of the different things that we see around us in fact pretty much everything that we see around us uh, is inside of the body of giant uh, galactic dragons or earthly dragons and their uh, living bodies. Now, if you've been following my other work at all, I recently released this meditation uh, activation to transmute uh, the virus and reconnect you to source. You can see it in my most recent video. Um, and this does play into uh, this does play into what I'm going to talk about today as well. And we're going to wrap this all together and really uh, tap you guys into this bigger picture of what's going on here. So on a personal level, reptilians, reptilian hominoids, which if you look all over the internet in past ancient religion, uh, esoteric history, mythology, uh, there's always a lot of talk about reptilians, right? The humanoid reptilian beings, they were even uh, looked to as gods in a lot of different ancient uh, cultures. And dragons and reptilians of course go hand in hand because the reptilians original genetics of course descended from the dragons as well and those beings are the ones that did the original genetic uh manipulation creation splicing of humans as we know it of course um and i could get deep into the different references biblical material and things like that but you can look up a lot of that for yourself. I may do things in the future on that. What's important to understand in this moment is if you've looked into anything about that, you can see in a lot of these different mythologies and talk in different circles that there is speak about how the reptilians were essentially quarantined here on Earth uh, and unable to basically that the, the moon was put here to keep uh, the reptilians in quarantine and the reptilians being synonymous with uh, uh, quote-unquote fallen angels right the Sumerian Anunnaki reptilians and I want to show how this is very related to what's going on right now and also just the purpose of human life in general the purpose what are we all doing here right so this is of course a reference to the fact that in our bodies, in the human body system, there is a reptilian brainstem, okay? Reptilian brainstem is what controls mostly our nervous, uh, sorry, our motor system function, our sensory motor function, right? Our auto automatic things that we just do without thinking about it, like our, uh, you know, kind of like our heart beating on its own. And, um, you know, we're walking, there's different muscle fibers twitching and things going on like that. But what this system also does is it puts into place and keeps into place uh, what we know as triggers, right? Emotional triggers, things that uh, from trauma, programming, conditioning, when we are young, just happen without us having any control over it, right? It's like when somebody comes something, does it, oh, and we, we jump or like they bring something up in us where we kind of uh, all of a sudden get super angry and start yelling, can't control ourselves, something like this. These are all, you know, different emotional triggers. And <clears throat> this is, of course, emotions are related to the moon, right? And really what this is, is the 
as I stated before in my last video, this entire thing that we are in part of, inside of, right, both our body and the earth as a whole, because this is all just a fractal, right? It's like a giant Russian doll of sorts where this earth that we are part of, that we are living inside of is, is essentially an egg. It is an incubator for a larger consciousness, just like we, our bodies are an incubator for a growing consciousness. The human body was always meant to be a birthing tool, not a dying tool, right? Uh, and I can explain, but we're getting into deep stuff here with what I mean about that. So when we come, when our consciousness comes into a human body, which by the way, uh, most of you that are watching this decided and chose to take an incarnation here on earth because humans are essentially meant to be the solution to an ancient galactic virus. What is this virus? Well, this virus is essentially the illusion of separation, right? What does that mean? Well, on a, on a galactic level, the consciousness, the being, the intelligence that is this universe, right? There had to be mechanics and a way for this very highly intelligent being to birth a child or multiple children, something separate from itself, right? This Imagine a very large infinite type consciousness being and it needs a way to separate the vast intelligence and energy and consciousness into being a separate individual or multiple separate individuals, right? So th the way that this essentially worked is that it created a, a virus in the lining of its womb, a lining, a virus in the lining of a galactic womb, right? And what is this? This substance, this virus is essentially a mercurial type of film, a reflective film, because this is what it wanted. This is the way self-reflected consciousness exists, right? In order to reflect on having a separate self, there has to be something for light to reflect off of. And this is a mercurial-like film, right? And this is why mercury rules the mind in, um, in astrology. And this is why mercury is the twins. Um, and we are heavily in Gemini season right now. So this is the perfect time to kind of wrap all this together, right? So this mercurial-like film allows for uh, self-reflected consciousness on on high levels, right? It's just the substance of Mercury that allows for thought, right? And this is why Mercury is related to Thoth, the god of thought, okay? So we have this mercurial-like substance that allows for separation to exist, right? And this essentially separate consciousness, though, ended up on a galactic level leading to all sorts of different issues, right? In particular, we have the separation of, there, there was cloning essentially that happened on a galactic level. There was a creation of the reptilian species uh, as a hybrid. And then there was the reptilian uh, humanoid combination. And then there was cloning of these beings, right? Cloning to essentially be a part of a giant galactic war that originated in the Orion system. And so when this cloning started to take place, there was um, a, this kind of a, created a sort of glitch, you could say, because by creating life via cloning rather than the natural process, what this did is create a disconnect in the beings that were cloned from source consciousness, right? Because there wasn't that continual connected lineage in the genetic system. This created a break, right? And later on, this break, this DNA, this corrupted DNA was spliced into the human genome, uh, essentially uh, coming into what we know as humans uh, as we know it, 
right? There was the story of the Garden and e Garden of Eden in the Bible, and this, this is essentially referencing splicing DNA that was going on to create human beings. Although there's a lot more going on there that I won't specifically get into in this talk, but essentially that was referencing uh, splicing of genetic material that went on, and this was intentionally done. Uh, one faction of these reptilians. Uh, felt that humans could essentially serve as slave or servant race um, because <coughs> because of this disconnection from source there was a need to essentially reconnect to spirit and reconnect to multi-dimensional consciousness in a way where it took uh, essentially outside substances whether that was monatomic gold or uh, things like adrenochrome, different, uh, there's all sorts of different experiments that happened in order to be able to resolve this problem of being disconnected from essentially their his story, their tale, right? The dragon's tale, their story, their memory, their ancient connection to source, which is actually what would allow them to transcend uh, certain frequency bands, specifically in this case, transcending the interdimensional lock of the moon. Okay, so now we're getting, we've got big picture. What does this have to do with you? What does this have to do with us? Well, when we incarnate into a human body, there are these different things that we experience that are specifically related to our genetic blueprint our genetic blueprint is related to our astrology chart, our human design chart. This is why I also do human design uh, gene keys, astrology synthesis sessions, because this is essentially a slice of the fractal that we came in on, right? Because as I said in my last video, the solar system is galactic dragon DNA. And then we incarnate at a specific time and place and we come into the time and place of our birth. And this dictates the essentially agreements that we have made of transmuting different things in the genetic material to reconnect, reconnect the lineage, reconnect the system to back to source by transmuting the shadows that incur. Because what happens we're born then that birth chart dictates what sort of traumatic types of experiences that we tend to have, or uh, it essentially, we have these different situations as we grow up where really what is happening is it's creating a sort of shell around us, right? We come in very open, very connected, very, uh, basically like unlimited in our consciousness as these energy beings. And then these series and sequences of events slowly start disconnecting us, right? Giving us a unique separate identity structure, right? By these different things that sometimes are traumatic, they come in and, you know, create that self-reflected consciousness, that illusion of separation. And this is essentially us coming into like a cocoon like mode or like very much so like an egg, like a chicken egg, right? Once again, this is all just a giant egg of sorts. And is a, this is a fractal. Our body is like that as well. And so what happens is these different things come in that disconnect us as trauma programming and conditioning. And then at one point, we, we start to awaken. We go through the awakening process, the ascension process. And what is that? Well, that once again, we bring it all the way back to the dragon beans, the dragon spiral force, the electromagnetic dragon force known as Kundalini, the Christic force begins to awaken our next level, our next layer, our next birth of sorts, right? Because this is what this is the point of the human body is not to just grow, uh, whatever, live this kind of boring matrix, quote unquote, life and then die and then come back in and do it all over again. The human body was created to create another layer, another body, an energetic body, very much so like a butterfly works, right? Where 
essentially it, we come to this point where trauma programming conditioning gets us into this cocoon of a separate identity, this trauma-based ego consciousness. And then once the Kundalini force of awakening comes in, ideally we start to digest that trauma programming condition, literally like eating and converting the, the shadows and the trauma material in our body, converting it into a uh, new transformed, transmuted, free and available light and energy. And this is the solar force as well, the Christic solar force, that force of the child, the Christic force comes in, awakens and starts breaking down the illusions of separation. And we start reconnecting back into uh, both within the deeper force within us, right? Reconnecting and remembering, literally remembering or putting the pieces back together, remembering our connection to the Christos within that, that child, that Christic force of our unique childlike nature starts to rebirth us. And this is the whole idea of the baptism, right? Or being born again, quote unquote, in Christ is that we are then reborn a new multi-dimensional creator being. We as children start to incarnate. And this is a multi-dimensional energy body that starts to perceive in new ways, it becomes its own co-creator with the cosmos, with the environment around it on a multi-dimensional level by essentially dissolving that virus, that illusion of separation. And this is all ruled by the moon. Because when we are still in trauma, when we are still in our cocoon, we cannot actually perceive and transcend and essentially leave our body, right? Because that's really what's going on here. The earth is also a body. So the reptilians are quarantined here on earth on a greater level, right? They can't essentially leave the earth. Uh, they can't uh, travel interdimensionally off the earth. Same thing that goes on as a fractal for us in our body. Can't leave and travel multidimensionally in our bodies when we're still ruled by lunar consciousness, which is essentially those triggers, right? Because those triggers are all of our trapped power, our trapped resources, our fuel, our ability to sense and perceive on these new layers and levels, essentially becoming a solar being, a solar consciousness that can finally uh, incarnate its full breadth and depth and its true purpose of being here, which is as a Christic multidimensional co-creator. And so this is essentially the whole uh, thing that is going on with us as individuals. Now, how does this relate to my other video I told you about the activation or really what's going on, on this planet right now in general? Well, because like I said, there have been many disagreements about the solution to the virus of the illusion of separation or how we get past, uh, you know, how we as individuals get past the barrier of the moon being stuck on the planet and things like that. Um, some have believed that it's technology, right? There is a technology based path. And this is what we see in terms of the ancient disconnection of this, this virus, right? is this is what we are seeing in the whole pandemic in general because the only way that you need some sort of uh thing like a uh you know this essentially technology placed within your blood in your body to protect you uh is generally because you're disconnected from that source within and also source without, right? The external nature of the great mother of the womb that we are inside of knowing that everything is here. And this is our original purpose is this beautiful organic vessel that's here to create this uh, organic multidimensional psychic uh, interdimensional consciousness as co-creators. It's just that these ways of doing this have either been forgot or, you know, certain beings don't want to confront their shadow material. They don't want to get in there and do the work to confront the inner demons and shadows to do the work to transform those things to actually become these higher dimensional light beings, these true co-creators, because 
when they look, and there's a uh, beautiful turkey that just flew there. Um, love that turkey energy. There's so much of it around here. They're great teachers and beings. Um, but anyway, what I was saying is, you know, when when, the, when we confront that mercurial film, that, 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 that film that's very much like a mirror, when the ego, when the trauma-based ego looks in that self-reflected mirror, it is scary, right? What it sees, it can be scary. It can be, uh, it can bring up a lot of stuff. And this is where, um, this is where some beings choose to take that path of, uh, you know, technology or not confronting those things, not going through that ego, uh, death process and actually going through the transformation to convert and transmute those shadows in the, to this higher dimensional, multidimensional vehicle of consciousness. And to give you the, the full breadth of this picture, this is also uh, related to the Gemini, uh, Gemini Sagittarius axis that we are in right now. Mercury is about to go retrograde. See, because the Pleiadians uh, are really, they're related to the seven sisters on that cusp of Taurus in Gemini and there was this separation uh, in those species the reptilians from the Pleiadians essentially the Pleiadian spirits uh, in the Pleiadians are the spiritual aspects of the reptilians and so this was where that separation the cloning process happened because the spirits had to go somewhere and so for those Pleiadian light beings essentially uh, there is sometimes there's this difficulty to want to confront the shadow nature of the reptilians which in our personal bodies uh a lot of times in the start of the awakening process many people encounter the pleiadians and this is because these are those light body aspects those light beings that they too on a galactic level actually really do desire for a lot of humanity to to awaken so that they can get out of this trap cycle and loop and start reintegrating and go on to the next point of their evolution. And yeah, so I hope this has been helpful for you. Part two, there's so much that I could get into here. If you've enjoyed this like this, please smash up the like button and check out that meditation below that I've created if you want assistance in tapping you back into that father, mother, God source within you. This is also a specific meditation that I created to help with the viral shedding process. A lot of people are experiencing a lot of these different symptoms, pain and aches or sinus issues right now because of that shedding that's happening from some, from being around people that have gotten that, uh, gotten that poke recently and stuff like that. So it's all related, it's all interconnected. If you want a one-on-one -on -one session, go ahead and click below too. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a beautiful weekend and I can't wait to share more of Dragon Drama Cosmology with you soon.